I was basically trying to convince Taylor Swift to like release like the video that I'm in as her lead single. And I was like, shut up. Like, stop. <laughs> I couldn't, but I, was, like, I just kept talking. And uh, yeah, it was so embarrassing. But she did do it. Now, I'm not saying because of me. I think because <laughs> right. that song is so good. That song's fucking amazing. Yeah. The a, why wouldn't, why wouldn't you suggest that? And B, were you on back pain pills? <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm doing my best. Sorry, I just got your text. I was trying to figure out what that was about. No, I don't know what that is. I sent it to you because I, I sent Casey a screenshot of an email she had sent me that's just blank. Like, it just makes no sense. It's so Um, weird. I feel like I could blame Mercury retrograde. Sure. If that's happening. But just lately, I technology has not been my friend. And I feel like, it feels like a prank to me. But even on my relatively new phone, when I try to Google something, like Google is always blank. Um, And I'm like, okay. Well, flares? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, definitely solar flares. So, solar flares? Sometimes. I just, <laughs> like, literally, literally, oh my God. I, you know, I've been having, like, all these issues with my phone. Yes. You, you were like, I have to get a new phone. Well, I was, it was confirmed that I needed to get a new phone. Okay. And because I went to the Apple store when I was in L.A. Sure. Because I just had had it. I like literally I was like, guys, I can't do this anymore. (laughs) (sighs) And And they ran all the diagnostics at the thing at the Apple store for me. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, no, your phone has some issue. It needs a whole new back plate. And I was like. I don't even know what that means, but okay. Why Never would that happen? It. Never heard of it. I was like, why would that why would that be a thing that has happened? And they're like, no idea. <sighs> don't know. Don't know uh, why. Just lucky. I was like, just lucky. Just lucky, I guess. <laughs> I just was like, okay. Well. So then I was looking, because you know, you can like trade in your phone or not trade in, but like you can like get money toward a new right. phone. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, let's price it out. How much is it going to be to fix the phone versus how much is it going to be to get a new phone? And by the time it was like all said and done, the kids were like, is this, how much longer is this going to be? And I'm like, well, <laughs> we just have to leave. So I just left and I still don't have my phone still. <laughs> oh, <laughs> still okay. Work. So you're still. Do you know what I mean? I'm just like, I couldn't, it just couldn't, it couldn't happen. I needed to like. You couldn't handle it. <sighs> God gives you what you can handle. <laughs> sometimes I wonder, sometimes I'm like. Is this a little more than I can handle? You, here's what I think. I think if it's true that God gives you what you can handle, I think that God has a lot to handle. Mm. And sometimes he or she or they they uh, get a little overwhelmed and like overwhelmed, and and they they make a bad Drop call about how much Drop I can handle. <laughs> yeah, I think Ball's it happens. Dropped. It happens more than we more than we think. I always oh, yeah. lo- I always love that when people are like, "God never gives you more than you can handle," and I'm like, mm. "I don't." It seems like a lot of us aren't handling it. it seems like a lot of people, and it seems like people are handling things worse than I'm handling things, and that's no shade I mean, to them. No one's handling things worse than me in this one. <laughs> but <I'm> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no joke. <laughs> How are you? How was your trip back to the East Coast? Well, I mean, literally, it's been silent here. And now it's like I start talking to you and the immediately sirens. Yeah, they have non- to do their... They... Listen. <sighs> what is this fucking... What your is phone this doesn't world work, but I've created? 
My like, phone you know I mean? works too well. My phone definitely reports to New York City that like, okay, they're about to start recording. So fire up the sirens. It's also where the location that you live in is probably like, it's probably some type of activity hub, you know, like everywhere in New York City. There's very few places that are quiet in New York City, but yours is probably just more active than other places. Yeah. You know? know? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I but know, your okay. your trip was okay. Yeah, I'm okay. I think it's a it's been like a it's a, it's been a it's been a weird it's been weird. It's yeah, been weird. Yeah, it was really I've been really sad. I was really sad when I saw on the plane yesterday about World Central Kitchen and right. um and that they and then I have been following the story this morning that they um have lost seven people were killed yeah in a strike in gaza you know seven aid workers humanitarian workers who work with world central kitchen and you know i've you know that i've volunteered with world central kitchen before but beyond that like I just believe so deeply in like that people should be able to live and be fed. Yeah. And I just, I don't know. I, it's just devastating. It's so sad. And it's, it's really sad. I've been following this story as well. And also, It's very frustrating because I'm seeing like people are responding to it. And I think that people have an affinity in their hearts for World Central Kitchen because they're just always there. Jose Andres is always, always there. I mean, truly, like whether it's natural disaster, war, literally the writer strike. Yes. Like in which, no joke, like they were feeding us during the writer strike, Jose Andreas. Right. And the f- and the, these people, they don't even think about like the danger of some of the situations that they're going into. And it's just, it's in good faith. But then I've also seen people being like, oh, now you're upset. And it's like, no, that's not the point. The point is, is that like, it's additionally sad. It's additionally s- sad and infuriating and it's unfathomable. All... I just like I'm I'm very frustrated with I agree. people using their frustration to tell other people that they're sad in the wrong way. I just like I don't understand I don't understand that tendency and I that's what I have seen so much of this morning and it's just like just let people like it's unfathomably sad. It's and nobody could ever sum it up or express it properly on social media to begin with, which is where this is all happening. Well, that's the issue, right? I don't know if like appropriate is the right word, but like it is all outside of the like scope of being reduced. All all of what we're, I mean, honestly, basically everything that we're going through and have been going through exists far outside the scope of what a social media post is capable of doing. And I mean that like wholly. Right. You know, and to expect people to like have it to, to expect that there is like a way in which it is a correct way or an incorrect way to like be processing and or speaking out and or expressing grief or outrage or whatever like that there is some hand who who where's the hand, give me the handbook uh, right, I'll take it right. oh you wrote it great right so i'm just like 
whenever anyone's like, just, I mean, it's, it's none of you listening. I know. <laughs> You know, but like, just but whenever again, I, but I believe in preaching to the choir, Casey. So keep yeah, going. You're right. You're right. Whenever anyone is like coming into my DMs to correct who they think I am and what they think I think about all of this, automatically I'm dismissing whatever you said because you don't know me. You don't know what I'm doing. You don't know what I think. And t- to presume to know any of that is wild. It's wild. And also, it's not a great use of your time. What if well, I said that to you? You know, Not right. to you, but to someone coming into my DMs like, oh, you're upset about the World Central Kitchen, but you weren't upset about... Blah, blah. You don't know what the fuck I was upset about. You don't know what I did. You don't... And clearly, you don't listen because these are things that I've said... And post it about publicly, but I get it. I don't expect every single person in the world to have seen or know everything that I've ever said or thought. I never said that. But to be so presumptuous to like come to me and tell me that I'm not doing enough or not doing it right, or like you don't fucking know. And it's not a good use of your fucking time. Because could I not click over to that person's profile and be like, oh, you had a birthday party for your dog instead of protesting X, Y, Z thing that I'm passionate about? You could do better. And here I am like, I'm in the worst possible position, right? Because I'm making it about myself and about my feelings. It's just that I've seen so much of that this morning. And I'm like, I get it that you're frustrated. I get it that you're frustrated. But like, to be perfectly honest, I'm still, I'm still mentally processing and dealing with 9-11. I still don't know what to make of that that I lived through. And like literally lived through it, like had the ashes on my face, you know, with my babies running down the street. I actually only had one baby. I had one baby inside me, one baby outside of me. But so like, technically, I'm going to so allow it. So technically, yeah, allow you'll it. allow it. You'll allow it. Um, I just feel like like I'm still trying to sort out what to say about that every year when the anniversary of that comes up. Like I, I have seen more than I think a person is meant to see in their lifetime. And I know people have seen worse and I know people have lived through worse and I don't know how they do it. But I am just like, it's so weird when I saw the world central thing, like my first instinct was to post something about it. And then I just was like, I don't, I just, I don't know what to say. Like those people were so fucking brave and they're just trying to do the simplest human thing, feed other humans. And supposedly the way was supposed to be safe for them because it was allowed, right? It was like Israel allowed World Central Kitchen to go in and and now ships are being turned away with aid for people in Gaza and I'm like, oh, you know, that goal was accomplished to be even more cruel and punitive in this. Now the situation is even worse and these people are lost on top of all of the people, thousands, tens of thousands of people lost. And I'm just like, I just, I don't know what to say about it. And yes, in my pitiful, self-centered heart of hearts, I'm just like, how can I say this? How can I express how I feel about this without inviting people to be like, you said it wrong. What you said was wrong. You didn't say enough. You didn't say it fast enough. You didn't say exactly something that took into consideration everyone's feelings. And it's, it's not possible. It's, it's not possible. And so I just, I don't know what to say other than I feel this personal connection to the people from World Central Kitchen because I'm so familiar with all of the work that they do, because I'm so familiar. 
and they're a fixture in my own life that it's additionally tragic, but not more tragic than right. other people that have died, if you want me to say that. I mean, it's like, also just like, I don't know. And, but I, am, but like, I don't need you to say, like, do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I just, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit like still trying to, f I'm trying to figure out what, what is this thing that's happening from the perspective of just like being a human that's interested in the way that everyone is, that people process everything i mean to be honest right like i i'm very curious as to like culturally what has happened and what is happening uh with people like what in terms of like the way that they're going after other people i don't know it's interesting I, like i i mean it sucks but it's yeah but i'm but I'm like, I guess I like, I feel like it's like a, a code that we can crack. Do you right. know what I mean? And right. I, and I just am trying to like, <sighs> figure it out. I don't know. I don't. Obviously, a great many people are in a great deal of pain. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's clear that to me that it's a very complicated situation mm -hmm. and like and I'm not saying it's complicated by way of excusing mm -hmm. anyone's 100% anything I'm saying it's a very old historically complex situation while at the same time right now not being very complex like in that it's it's cruel like what is happening is cruel it's an atrocity that is difficult to comprehend yeah and you know like I said we have had our own terrible things happen in this country on a much smaller scale and I think that we're trying to still sort it out decades later so you can't make sense of something that doesn't make any fucking sense, you know? No, and I was thinking about that, like, truly, like, again, yeah, putting it in the perspective of, like, our own losses, a friend, like, a very good friend of a good friend of mine passed away in the last couple of days from cancer. Yeah, I, and I knew her, too. Yeah, I had just seen her, actually. I mean, and she was literally just diagnosed. Like, it was yeah. very, very, very fast. Yeah. And, you know, of course, I was thinking about Kate and... Right. And thinking about how we all felt like five months was too fast, you know. And then yeah. my sister's, my brother-in-law's best friend, who also was diagnosed and then within literally like, you know, a month and a half was yeah. gone yeah. recently. And like now, and now this, you know, fairly young woman who so many people knew and loved that yeah. I know. And like, and I was just talking with my friend about it. And I was like, it doesn't, it won't, it doesn't make sense. It won't ever right. make sense. Right. And it's hard because our brains are trying to make it make sense. And maybe, and maybe that's part of it. Like we also, a lot of times I think people want to blame someone. Yeah. And maybe that's like where this thing is coming from. Like that's the motivation behind, like if people could just get still for one second and think to themselves, like, why is this, what is, why do I feel like such anger toward a random person on the internet? Because it's like not just, it's not just public people. It's like all kinds of people who have gotten kind, you know, have said that they've felt like almost um, like kind of like paralyzed by speaking out about anything because they just feel like they're going to be attacked by someone. Right. You know, and about everything, literally about everything. Right, right. So, Maybe that is it. Maybe it's about 
the helplessness and like wanting to be able to blame or point a finger at someone else never makes you feel better. That's no. the thing. No. It doesn't. And I I understand. I get it. Like I I think sometimes people are critical of people that they feel even safe being critical of. Like I think sometimes people are like, I I feel like I can say this to you because it'll do some good. Like I think you'll listen to me. Mm. Um, but I kind of am like, I just try to assume the best of people that I know are doing their best. And so, I don't know. Dude, I feel like I try to assume the best of everyone, whether or not I even think they're doing their best. I mean, well, so <laughs> there. I'll be honest. There are people that I don't assume the best of because I know, you know, like they have a track record of being horrible. And so I just know. Yeah. But I'm also like but, not <sighs> bothering to like, troll them or whatever. You know what I mean? Because right. it doesn't do any good. It, it just makes matter. them more powerful or whatever. Yes. But this is all that I'm saying. I have been following the World Central Kitchen news as I have been following all of this news every day. When I don't have something educated or enlightening to say on the subject, I usually am quiet on it just because like that means I don't know enough to add anything to the conversation that's not already out there. So sometimes I'll amplify someone who is much more educated on the situation than I. Sometimes I'll just be quiet and listen, which is something that we have been encouraged to do so much. And that's correct, I think. Sometimes it's good to be quiet and listen. So I've been doing a lot of that, a lot of being quiet and listening and learning. But he, but I hate that when I saw the World Central Kitchen thing, my first instinct was to share something. And then my second instinct was to not share anything because yeah. I was like, if I do this, this is what I feel like is going to happen. And then... I saw what I felt like was going to happen happen to so many people like you should shut up about World Central Kitchen because you didn't say enough about this and you said nothing about this. And and I just was like, yeah, I don't know what the right thing to do is, but I don't feel like what's going on is the the right thing either. You know, <laughs> it's not helping. It's not making me any smarter the reason why I'm even talking about this is because I'm sure a lot of people feel the same way. You know, I, I'm sure a lot of people, I just see people making these like wild straw man arguments. I don't know. I haven't looked, but I'm sure people are like calling people out about thinking too much about how much they love Beyonce's album because they could be like thinking about more important things or what, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know this to be true, but I'm sure it's true. You know, like we're just in such a weird place where people are like so vocally critical about anything that, Everything? yeah. And at the same time, like I literally saw a person on Facebook and it was kind of, it was related to this situation or whatever, but this person was just like, did a really... I don't want to say unhinged post, but it was like a very angry, vitriolic post about how they personally didn't feel supported and they felt like betrayed by things that people were thinking and they they felt hated and which I don't. I don't feel hated, you know. I I hope no one thinks. But this person was really like they really. It was like, clearly, they were really, really, really feeling this. And I was just like, yeah, I get, like, I understand feeling that way. I maybe wouldn't put it in a Facebook post or whatever. Because I just, again, I don't think it's useful. I don't think it's productive. And I don't think that, like, the feeling that you were gonna get of people commenting either in support or in opposition is really going to do that much to actually solve whatever problem it is that's making you 
feel that way. Um, but I was like, but it's everyone's right to like do what they want to do. But I was kind of like, you know, well, if I'm being honest, I was being judgy and being like, I don't think I would do this in this way. But also like being compassionate, kind of like this person is in a place where they must feel like this is the only, the only recourse that they have for the way that they're feeling. But because judginess won out, I went and clicked on their timeline and like an hour before the person was like, so anyway, going to Paris, does anyone have any recs for like great restaurants? You know? (laughs) And then like the next post after that was also about like the trip to Paris. And I just kind of was like, weren't you just telling (laughs) everyone, you know, that like everyone's a piece of shit and that they're not living right. And that, and that's what I wanted to say on the Paris post and be like, didn't you just tell all of us that like you hate us so much? <laughs> you hate us so much because we're not doing anything right. And like, good for you. Like, I'm glad you're going to Paris. It sounds like you could use the vacation and the croissant. But I don't know. It just, it's very weird. I guess we all don't know what we're doing. We all don't know what we're doing. And we're all not doing anything right because what is their right to do? You know what I mean? What is the right thing to do? I just think there are certain things that like I'm never gonna be able to comprehend as a person. Yeah, I mean, look. (laughs) Yes. But I mean, and war, war, turns out, war is one of them. Is How fucking about that? incomprehensible. Yes. For everyone. Because also, like, the the most incomprehensible thing about war is it has nothing to do with the tens of thousands of people who are... Right. Right. Sacrificed. No, it's so fucking incomprehensible. Mm-hmm. Or, or, like, we're not... It doesn't make any... I mean, and it, it's just whatever. I mean, Casey, I... Mm, And it can't, like, it can't make sense. If it made sense, like, it doesn't make sense to me why they still are doing it, why it's still happening. Like, I don't fucking understand any of it. I don't understand any of it. I'm not kidding. How have we not fucking evolved beyond it? It's so fucking insane. And I'm, whatever. I, I get, like, you know, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's all a lot right now. Everything is a lot. And my heart, like, you know, our hearts, all of our hearts are just in like a constant state of breaking, you know? Right. For a myriad of reasons. So I guess, I mean, yeah, I've said a lot, but I guess what I'm trying to say is, World Central Kitchen, whenever I don't know what to do about a situation, what I can do as an average citizen, World Central Kitchen is always something that I feel like I can do because all they do is pure good. And so I can take some money and send it to them. And that is something that makes me feel like at least I did something. And then those fucking brave people, like those people that are actually on the ground doing it, even when it was for the writer's strike or whatever natural disaster, when they're not necessarily in danger, they're still taking time out of their lives and they're going and doing this. But then in this case, they were in danger, clearly. And they must have known that, I guess, but they I think they were supposed to be not necessarily were, in danger. Yeah, I think they were um, supposed because to it be was like an approved action. Safe. Well, yeah. Right. It was supposed to be so, but humanitarian. They just, but like also Doctors Without right. Borders. Like that's right. the, I mean, you know, I always, right. it's interesting because like those are the two, those are the two organizations I always have. And World Central Kitchen's like relatively new, just in the last, right, maybe 10, 10 years-ish. Right, right. 10 years-ish. So... Uh, I guess they're one of the organizations that I just implicitly trust to always do the right thing because I believe Jose Andreas is an angel on this earth and 
just, I just trust him that he is like trying to always give the most basic human need, which is food, which gives everybody the strength to go on and continue to try to get through whatever disaster or atrocity that they're trying to get through. And so that's all I keep thinking about is like, that's why I have such a personal connection to World Central Kitchen. I'm sure a lot of people feel the same way. And it doesn't mean that I was never connected to the tens of thousands of people who have been needlessly killed in this thing that doesn't even make any sense to me and that I'm not an expert on. I mean, it, do- it doesn't mean right. that I haven't been connected to every person who's been killed in some other senseless atrocity that's happened elsewhere in the world because that's something that I've seen people call out to. Like, you care about this, but you don't care about that. And it's not, it's just, it's incomprehensible to me. And sometimes when something is incomprehensible, I maybe don't keep screaming it's incomprehensible because I'm trying to comprehend what I can about it and I'm trying to be thoughtful about it. I mean, to be honest with you, I personally feel a bit like there are certain actionable things that can be done, you know, reaching out to like reps, making your voice heard in a way that like possibly can have some sort of possibly, possibly have some sort of impact, right? Yeah. And then... And then truly beyond that, for me, the social media element of it becomes either like a little echo chambery, Yes. Or unhelpful. Yes. Even under the like sharing outrage and information. Right. To, that is my feeling. Yes. I prefer to share actionable items yes. and things that can be and and of course like that's not a fucking that's not like an every that's not like a hard and fast rule all the time the only right. thing i share because none of us have that like that's just insane like none of us move through the world in that way there's not a guidebook you know I mean? for this either there's not a guidebook for how to there's no no there's not And it is complicated, and especially as we're, like, heading into this election. I mean, the Florida Supreme Court yesterday basically upholding fucking DeSantis's bullshit fucking six-week abortion ban. I mean, it's an abortion ban. It's a complete abortion ban. Right. And then saying, but the voters can decide in November, which is like, (sighs) all right, motherfuckers. Right. I mean, the consequences that these bands have had it's we're already seeing them oh but for sure there are there it's already so regular to see the consequences women young women children who aren't women yet are children are seeing the consequences and living with the consequences of these bands it's inhuman and horrifying and there are things that we can do to work toward helping to reinstate rights for people, all people. There are like funds to help people. Yes. Who to be able to access. I don't know. I mean, I know this is like, it feels like, it's like, what are you talking about? It's like, it's all, it's all happening simultaneously. And like, that's what we're being asked to hold all the time, right? Is like all of these things. And right. also then you want to like have a presence on social media. I don't even fucking know, man. Uh, I'm on a TV show where I play a pop star. <laughs> like, right. You know what I mean? There's a lot to do and say. Right. And like we, you know. 
And I and watched the first episode of Shogun, but also <laughs> am upset about, um, you know, other things, worried about the election. Right. Like, and I'm trying to be thoughtful and responsible about the things that I do share. But I don't love that people assume that they know everything that I'm doing based on that, you know, what I, like this little slice, this little picture. And I'm sure it's times a million for you. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe not. I don't fucking know. Who knows? Who knows? But whenever anyone's like, I think that you didn't do this right. I, what I always want to ask is, okay, what do you think I should do? What, what's your, what are you, what did you do? Who did you call today? Give me the number. I'll call that person. In addition to the things that I did that you don't know about, because whatever, because I don't share every fucking thing I do online. But in addition, what did you do? Where did you give? What causes are you supporting? What actions are you taking? Let me know. Like, that is actually helpful to me. Instead of just, like, shaming me that, you know. And I hate myself. I hate myself because today I pre-shamed my own self. I was right. like, if I if I say something right, about right, this, right, right. here's what I'm going to get. So I'm not right. going to say anything about it. But here I yeah. am saying it all anyway. So well, RIP uh, my I DMs. Know. No, but you're saying it here, which is different. You know, this is like, like our therapy. The <laughs> and now I owe you a copay. <laughs> Lucky for you. It's a sliding scale. It's a sliding scale. <laughs> um, well, I mean, this has not been a real a real fun opener to it's hard to have a fun it's hard to have a fun opener some some days. So that it's been a morning and it's been an evening. <laughs> Before Good the afternoon. Morning. Good evening. And it's going to be, yeah, yeah. Look, it's just, again, what a time. We're, you know, sort of like asked to kind of, we must be able to. Hold all the things. We got to hold all the things, guys. We have to hold all the things in, in t- 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 as many hands as we can muster. So... I brought with me on my trip yes. two of the Blissey products because I was like, I'm going to be staying in all these different random hotels. Yeah. And so I didn't know what it was going to be like. So I brought my Blissey pillowcase. Love. Which I love. And I brought my Blissey sleep mask, which nice. I love because they're like anti-aging like it's a pillowcase that literally helps your skin <laughs> i mean which is like that's to me huge your it's skin self-care and your hair. while you sleep yes uh, it's a hundred percent mulberry silk pillowcases silk is what your hair what your skin what you need yeah, it's so good for my hair, particularly because I'm so abusive to my hair. Yes, and the breakage situation, you can just say goodbye to to the breakage because with the pillowcase, it actually um, reduces frizz and tangles and prevents breakage because it keeps the moisture in your hair. Right. And keeps your skincare products on your face. Whereas like regular cotton pillowcases just takes it from you. It's just a taker. <laughs> but it's also just like the best night's sleep ever. I love it. Comfortable and luxurious and cool. Yes. yes. It helps me get better sleep. And it feels so smooth and luxurious. <laughs> I have an extra one that Cricket wants, which really helps with her little curly head. She loves it. I mean, we love it, guys. You know... There are a lot of dupes out there. Right. And they claim things. But you know what? Silk is a luxurious all-natural fiber. Silk is more breathable. It's moisture-wicking. It's gentle, durable, and long-lasting. 
It is an investment in getting better sleep and waking up feeling ready to take on the day and no weird lines on your face. Your face will look beautiful. (laughs) Guys, everybody loves them. Blissey has a ton of different prints and colors. I have a beautiful blue that I love. And they make great gifts because there's an option for literally everyone. Men love them too. I'm just going to tell you. They have over 1 million raving fans and you could be next. Why don't you try it now risk-free for 60 nights at blissey.com slash busy pod and get an additional 30% off. That's B-L-I-S-S-Y dot com slash busy pod and use code busy pod to get an additional 30% off. Your skin and hair is gonna thank you. Okay, guys, we are excited to share with you an incredible scientific breakthrough to support your long-term health and wellness, C15. It's the first essential fatty acid to be discovered in 90 years. And get this, studies have confirmed that it's three times better, broader, and safer than omega-3s. What? Amazing. It's amazing. (laughs) By the way, the co-founder, Dr. Stephanie Van Watson, discovered C15 as the first essential fatty acid to be found in over 90 years while working with the U.S. Navy. And this is where it gets like, oh, to improve the health and welfare of aging dolphins. Aww. Come on. If it's good enough for dolphins, it is good enough for me. I want to live pretty, that dolphin it is. life. It's pretty simple. Essential nutrients keep our cells healthy, which keeps us healthy. And if you want to get real sciencey about it, studies show that C15 works by strengthening our cells, improving our mitochondrial function, and protecting us against damaging free radicals. The result, better long-term metabolic liver and heart health. That's like incredible. Fatty 15 is a science-backed, award-winning, vegan-friendly, pure C15 supplement. By replenishing our cells with that essential C15 nutrient, fatty 15 effectively repairs our cells and restores our long-term health. Hooray for science and dolphins. (laughs) We love it. Fatty 15 has three times more cellular benefits than omega-3 or fish oil, which, by the way, I don't want a fish oil burp. I'm just going to tell you. Fish burps, no. No, which is why I stopped taking those pills. Yeah. And now I got this C15 that's derived from plants. It's vegan friendly. It's free of all flavors. C15 is the only ingredient in fatty 15. It's 100% pure. No fish burps. (laughs) And so many more benefits. Yeah. There are are a myriad of benefits now and also as you get older, which namely improved metabolic liver and heart health, smoother functioning joints, deeper sleep, healthier hair, skin, and nails. I mean, that's kind of like the best part. (laughs) You know what I mean? Because you can't really see how good your liver looks. Exactly. But you can see how good your skin is looking. I do feel like my skin has been looking real good since I started taking it. Fatty 15. Fatty 15 is on a mish. They're on a mission, guys, to replenish your C15 levels and restore your long-term health. You can get an additional 15% off their 90-day subscription starter kit by going to fatty15.com slash busy and using the code busy at checkout. Guys, I'm obsessed with Fatty 15. I want you to be too. Go to fatty15.com slash busy and use our code busy at checkout for 15% off their 90-day subscription starter kit. Here's what I'm excited about. I'm excited about our guest today. It's about to get very fun in here, I predict. I hope so. Because it would also be a bummer if we just, like, cried. <laughs> <laughs> this per- Our guest today has made me laugh until I have cried so many times. 
I've been to see them live so many times and I've never been so close to having to leave a performance in an ambulance as all the times that I have seen today's guest. But you know our guest today. I've never met. I do. Well, first we were internet friends, which is how I meet everybody. Just because I'm <laughs> like a fan. And then I, and I'm like, oh, I'm obsessed. And then um, I got to see John Early live at, I can't, I can never remember what they renamed that place in Silver Lake. I don't know. Whatever it is. It used, what is it? Tell me, John. The satellite. The satellite. Wait. <laughs> It's now, it's still the satellite? It's gone. <gasps> gone. It's so, we lost it in COVID. She's gone. She's gone. Now, but what, She's she was there forever, the satellite. I know. It used to be something else. It was something else. That's what I'm like, I can never remember. Um, I, I don't, I don't remember things. Um, and then the joy of my life. Well, what, I mean, Search party. I we didn't did, we didn't work together, did we? No, no. you weren't there. We no. didn't even. Did we even see? Did we ever cross each other in a trailer? No, I don't think so. I don't think we did. I don't think we did. But one of my favorite episodes of this season of Girls by Veva, John Early is the guest star with the emphasis on star <laughs> playing an unhinged fetal representative <laughs> is that what it is what is it you're like the state representative yeah, for, yeah. for fetal, fetal life or something? i think, I think yes like you're a fetal, fetal advocate. advocate see another way guys we get to yeah. we, we have to do it all we have to do it all we gotta laugh or we're gonna cry john it's john early everybody hi guys hi hi john early is it so early for it's you up. i mean really it's really early it's 10. You you look a little sleepy. <laughs> but I'm fine. Yeah. I flew back last night and I landed at like 11 p.m. with my 10-year-old cricket. We got home at 12.30. And I had to wake uh -huh. up at 7 a.m. to get that little person to school. Unacceptable. <laughs> That's, Wow. So I feel a little crazy. She had too. to go to school. Um, I mean, I I feel bad for her. It's fifth grade, little. Casey. How hard can it be? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's so weird. Um, oh John, my gosh! Hi, hi y'all. I love both of your places. <laughs> Just oh, from you. behind you, so cute. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. People sometimes ask me if mine is a garage, if I'm in my garage, but it's my office. And then I feel kind of self-conscious that it looks, my office looks like a garage. I, I'm really loving all the dark wood. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. And I'm it's not a, afraid to say it. I love it too. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Getting all this dark wood in here was really, it was like a, um, it was a mid-century modern uh, wall unit that was in another home that my son went and collected for me and crammed it all into my office. And Oh, my God. I think it was like one of the nicer things that he's ever done for me. But Is he single? He is. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's so <laughs> sick. I'm, I'm kidding. Well, I mean, he's, he's a grown man. He's, he's he is a grown-up. Okay. Casey has grown children. <laughs> Casey's children aren't children. Okay, they're, good, good. Well, I adult. figured because he was lugging a, um, a mid-century <laughs> I just, John, I just did a play with my younger son, who's... Tw my older son's 24, and I just did a play with my younger son, who's 21, that had this huge ensemble cast of people, like, coming together. And... But what do you mean, did a play that you wrote? No, no. It was like um, it was a Women's History Month celebration play that I was conscripted to participate in at the last minute because a real actor wasn't available. I think, mm -hmm. but um, <clears throat> She's three being weird to herself. I think that that's not right. But whatever. Three separate like. cast members thought that my son was my boyfriend because we came in the car together. That's how grown up my son is. Wow. Like, well, that's how young you look. That's very nice, but it's not like that we necessarily value that. No, but it's 
It's very weird to have a very tall, very bearded pair of sons that people think are like, you know, grown yeah. men. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. But anyway, anyway, it's not about my sons. It's not about my office. It's about you are here to talk about this really cool movie that you made. And you were you were this the star of the movie, but also you produced it. I did. <laughs> <It's true. laughs> I produced it. What does producing even mean? Well, yeah. that's a good question. That's a question for you, I feel like, as the producer. Uh, Do you have a better well, this, understanding? This is actually one time where I, I feel like I earned my producer credit where I I mean, so this is like my like one of my oldest friends, Theta, Theta Hamill. She's the writer and director of this movie. Also, she's also in it. She like wrote she sent this script to me on my birthday. Like I didn't I knew she, vaguely she had an idea. But she was like writing, it was like all, it was in the first like year of COVID and it was a really, really nice thing to receive in, in that time. And, um, and I took it to neon, uh, and they thank God wanted to do it. Um, and, and wanted to like give Theta the shot. It's her first time directing a feature and, um, you know, and it was very like, it was very in a great way but also of course very challenging way. It was very low budget. Yeah. Um, but that was, you know, by design because they, you know, if it's low budget, they also can kind of let a first time filmmaker kind of truly do her thing. Right. And not be like, you know, lorded over. Um, so I don't know. I, yeah. And then, and then I, I, what, and because it was low budget, I mean, I guess every film set, no matter how, fancy it's like always just full of chaos yeah i mean for the most part yeah i would i would agree with that an easy time (laughs) no i've never been like oh that was chill i've literally never been like that was chill (gasps) right i'm trying to think like for real for real yeah it's always backstage at the muppet show that's like and we people do it because they love it. I think that's I what I always to, try I, to remember. Everybody loves this. Personally speaking, now I have never been on like I've been on like a big big budget comedy movies. You know, yeah. well, my favorite white chicks, which I want to spend at least seventy five percent of this talking about. <laughs> um, <laughs> listen, do you know? I think it's twenty five years this summer. Oh my god! That's amazing. They're is better. That right? No, training. twenty years. Sorry, sorry. My math is wrong. It was twenty-five years since I did Freaks and Geeks. It was twenty years wow. since. Um, yeah, it came out twenty years ago in June. White chicks. It's so amazing. It's great, but, <laughs> but I what remember, I was going to say. Busy. I have to say one thing about you. I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. But I when I watched White Chicks recently, I DM'd Busy, and I was like, I was like, it's. I was like. It's so good. Like, I didn't realize how good it was. And I was like, and I said to Busy, I go, I go, they don't make them like that anymore. <laughs> she goes, honey, they can't make them like they that. Can't. <laughs> honey, not a, we can't, we can't make them like that. No. <laughs> I, oh my gosh. It's I mean, it's true, but it's also yeah. like, I mean, it's a wild move. There are wild, wild. things in that movie. Yeah. Um, I haven't watched it. In probably 20 years. You're I probably have You're amazing in it. It's so, you're so good. It's crazy. It's really, really bizarre to watch <laughs> myself as a kid on, uh, like, as I'm now, like, hitting middle age, this is now just becoming a podcast where John's interviewing me. But, like, it <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah. I'm here for it. <laughs> it is so weird to see these things that I did when I was in my late teens and early 20s and like uh, it's just fucking wild it's wild yeah. um but my whole point was that i've been on big budget comedies i've never been on like my point my, i've never been on like a marvel movie or something like that you know what i mean um but probably the chillest set and job i ever had was cougar town Oh my god! Yes. Like the most chill. Like it was actually it, so fucking chill. It well, it felt like that to watch. Like it <laughs> totally. actually does. It it's does reflected. like sometimes there is like a relaxed quality where you're like, there. It didn't seem like. I mean, you don't have to answer this, but it's like it didn't seem like there were big egos necessarily. It seems like you guys were having fun. 
No, we were. And like, I think Courtney Cox was at a place in her life and career where she was like, and Bill Lawrence too, you know, created the show and his wife was, Krista was on the show. But Courtney was really at a point where she was just like, I'm not going to do it if it sucks. If it's like hard and people aren't nice. Like I just, there's no point. Like, yeah. I have four billion dollars. <laughs> like, why, why? Why would yeah. I subject myself? I was myself a friend. To I will always be a friend. <laughs> you know, and so I, and so it really was just like so. That set was chill. Everyone on the set was chill. It was just very fucking chill. That is a standalone experience yeah. in my Twenty-five year career, everything else does feel like backstage at the Muppet Show, and in some ways, I really like doing smaller indie things. Like as a producer, John, did you have any? You're starring in the movie, um, which, by the way, guys, is called Stress Positions. Stress Positions. We didn't even yeah. say. I mean, which is I know it's it's an uproarious comedy, but I will say the, the title <laughs> is a reference to Abu Ghraib. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So 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 get so you're 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 walk it's it's extremely funny, but there are some there are some heavy themes in there too. There really well, is. Well, I was gonna say w- going back to the conversation about it being a small budget, I, I think it's so fitting for the movie because it really starts out in the early days of COVID and there there's <laughs> There's one part in the very beginning that made me laugh so hard in that kind of laughter that comes from this place of recognition that is also painful. You're having a very serious conversation over speakerphone with someone in the very beginning days of the pandemic. And you like, as you're talking on speakerphone, you beat the pot out the window to like <laughs> celebrate the the yes. healthcare workers, the frontline workers. Yes. And like, and, but you look so frustrated and so put upon that you're like, I got to fucking go hit the pot right now. And, yes. <laughs> and it made me laugh so hard because I just was like, yes, this is relatable. It's so relatable and so memorable and also feels like a 500,000 years ago that it happened that we were like, we just opened the podcast talking about like doing what we can do as people about unfathomable things. And like, it's such a wild idea to me that like in the beginning of the pandemic in New York City, people were like, here's what I can do. I can stay in my house and I can hit a pot at seven o'clock. I know. And it did help. I think it in did, some ways. It was cathartic. It was totally cathartic. And it was like the, the closest thing we had to any sort of like community was just like hearing other people. Yes. It was it was crazy. But yeah, that what that detail was the detail that made me feel incredibly like seen by my friend. <laughs> because <laughs> I was like, this is like if I could boil down my kind of sensibility and my comedic sensibilities into like one gesture, it would be like, like it would be that moment, just like the, the pots and pans moment. Because <laughs> like, and I, I really, and it, to me, it felt very, it felt, like there's something kind of like Jennifer Saunders about it. It feels very yes, out of that. Totally. Like, like the impatient banging, like do, <laughs> doing the thing that you're supposed to be doing, you know? And like, and I, and also what was exciting to me about stress positions was like, that that was such a strange time for so many reasons and but like there was so much comedy you know there there was yes. like it was so like i mean it was such a dark dark time but like all the kind of the the things we had to do to like quote unquote be safe you know with like very little information you know and like yes. the, the kind of like the wild guessing of like like the alcohol I was spraying on every single grocery. I mean, like, the grocery. I was just grocery. totally like wiping down the groceries every outside. Leaf of every lettuce piece, like exactly, and like letting it air out. Like it took hours, you know. Yeah, totally unhinged. <laughs> I and microwaved my mail. I feel like like I was what? microwaving my mail. <laughs> <laughs> because yes, I was, was like, crazy. I don't know. I get yeah. this must be helping, correct? 
<laughs> and there I was have a also- picture. I have a picture of Mark and Sarah Beth Tomberlin, who was living in our guest house, so was like potted in with us, and that's like how we became so close with her. When they like st- restaurants in LA started, like were allowed to reopen for takeout or whatever, and I really wanted those fucking nachos that I loved so much <laughs> from Petty Cash, R.I.P. Petty Cash, and uh, I have a picture of Mark and SB like in the front like outside with wipes wiping down all of the takeout conta- it was you guys what ha- I know. it's crazy and that was really bizarre filming that cuz we it already when we were shooting it it felt so far away but like but in that scene i'm like wiping down takeout with like a, a you know and and i and i felt the thing that i felt back then which is like this isn't like, okay, yes, I wiped the bag, but now I'm grabbing the thing inside, which if there are COVID germs, my hands are now contaminated. And then I'm, but then I'm wiping that down, but then I'm touching my, like the, the cabinet, you know, it's like, yeah. it was so maddening. You were like, this isn't, this is an imperfect system. I'm all like, I could like, there are germs everywhere. It was just like, it was really maddening. But, but I do think there is, there is a lot of untapped comedy in that. And, and like, Obviously, too, like when people were making content about co- I hate that I used content, but films, TV about about COVID, it was always just kind of like about Zoom for some reason. Yeah, yeah, or totally. like because that's like wearing a mask on This yeah. Is Us one time. It was never about the kind of like spiritual like hell of that moment, and it was never about that. And there was so much obviously going on politically. There was like this great kind of racial reckoning in in the in the country and like which also and this is what i think is very bold about this movie it 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 led to a lot of like kind of self-surveillance mutual surveillance of people's language of your it led to a lot of like a kind of like paranoia about your own kind of like intentions or past or whatever other people all all of your relationships suddenly became very like allegorical yes Yes. Every every relationship became like like a metaphor for America. <laughs> yes, you know your, ca- your character. I feel like obviously you're playing it for comedy, and like I feel like your character to a lot of viewers will seem like oh my god, this poor guy, like he's unhinged or whatever. Yeah. To me, I was like, that's the most sane person <laughs> in the story at this like. For the time that you were talking about, I was like, yes, the 100%. I identify with every single thing that he's doing and his frustration with everyone else. Your character keeps saying mask, please, to people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, yes, that was me. That was me. Being that was like, yeah. <laughs> someone walking by my driveway, like, pull your mask up. Pull- yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. You know, totally. Um, I. it was so great. And it's such a, it's an, it's an indie film, which I love because I was alive in the 1990s and yeah. I loved the the original era of indie the film. Indie boom. The indie boom. And I'm so happy to see indie films coming back, w- w- you know, with that feel, with that small budget feel. But this is a case where the small budget actually, I think, contributes to how great the film is because... It makes sense, right? That is a time when money literally dried up. Yeah. And people were living in these strange kind of ad hoc families that they were throwing together. Yeah. And like committing to those families and like, yes. (laughs) You're like, well, I hate you, but in a weak moment, I decided to live with you yesterday. And (laughs) so we're stuck together for the foreseeable future. It's, it's really, really, it's really good, John. It's thanks. That's really sweet. Thank you. (laughs) Um, did you have to do anything like hold a boom mic or anything (laughs) while you were filming? Um, (laughs) I don't think I had to hold any booms, but like I had to hold I was, emotional booms. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, those emotional boom mics. We had a lot of really, really sweet young like people in the film world who like work on indies who work at this budget level right now, you mm-hmm. know. And I very quickly was like, oh, I'm, I'm getting older because I'm suddenly adopting a kind of maternal kind of. <laughs> 
uh, presence here. I was like, oh, I used to be them, but now I'm not. And I'm like, there's no other, there's no, there's no mommy here. <laughs> Someone's got to be like, mommy. I'm right. mommy. I yeah, guess I'm yeah. mommy. Yeah. Can you call yourself mother? <laughs> <laughs> it's me. Um, that is the weirdest feeling, especially because you've been doing this forever, like since yeah. you were a kid. I, and I feel like Busy and I have both, like, I, I entered entertainment as an adult but like the youngest possible adult you mm-hmm. know I was I was 21 I think yeah. when when I first had my job my first job on a really big TV show and I specifically remember I think for my 22nd birthday I remember a producer saying enjoy being the youngest I was the youngest once you won't be forever and I was like what a weird and ominous thing to say <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, when you said that you were the mommy, like, I really feel that, like, yeah, I'm so, so the mommy on everything that I work on now. Yeah. It was also like, I had just had like back surgery before this movie. Oh my which, God. What? We, Why? We had to delay it because I had back surgery. I had like, I had stuff from my back put in my face. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, I, uh, it looks great. I had my spinal fluid. Thank you. It's, it's just, it's just here. <laughs> um, I, uh, no, I um, I had a herniated disc. I've had the I've had this problem since like 2015, but like I've had three of these like micro discectomy surgeries, whatever. It's it's insane, and I have like nerve damage in my leg. It's it's wild. <sighs> it was a very and so and Theta kind of wrote that into the movie. Like my character has these back problems, and um. But also, like she wrote, like Pratt Falls into the movie, right? You know, I mean, that's a real, it's a real Aunt Sassy. <laughs> that's moment. a real good friend. Yeah, it's a real <laughs> Aunt Sassy. I felt like Aunt Sassy in the cupcake suit. <laughs> yes, I was like, like I was again. I can do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Go again. <laughs> Go again. Um, <laughs> it's like it was. It was kind of scary, but like. You know, but I mean, uh, we delayed it. Like she wrote the pratfalls before I had to have the surgery, obviously. Sure. And we and we delayed it because of that. But like, it was like, it's wild doing pratfalls with like a back injury, like oh, on Jesus. On, a, on that kind of indie's budget, like schedule, <sighs> where like it's like it was really. But but everyone we had like a stunt coordinator it was really great. But um, I don't know why I'm saying that. I guess I just wanted your sympathy. I mean, you have it. You have it. 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 (laughs) Wait, I have a question about doing pratfalls with a back injury. Are you the type of person that, like, you didn't feel it at all? Or were you feeling it 100%? I wasn't feeling it. Like, meaning, like, the pain? Yes. Yeah, I wasn't feeling it at all. Like, it was this, what, what specifically was scary about it was not like, oh, no, the pain. It was that, like... I am obviously a ham and mm. like if and you go too far, joke, I go too far. Mm-hmm. And if like the joke, if I know it could be, I, I, if I know that it'll be funnier, if I like do a forwards role, like I'll do the forwards, you know, like I, I, it's very hard for me to kind of protect my body when like the adrenaline's going and I'm like, you know, clowning for people. Yeah. 100%. So I was like, it was, I was like, I want to make this good. And I know I want to make this good, but how do I do it without going, having to have surgery again? Right. So, but I kind of, it was like, I think it was a healthy mix of, I think subconsciously I was protecting myself, but I was also really going for the joke. You and were I was going totally, for it. I was totally yeah. fine. I have one friend who's a musician. He's a punk his roots are in punk, but now he plays all kinds of music. But literally every time we go visit him backstage, he's bleeding. And uh, <laughs> my kids are always like, he's bleeding again. <laughs> like, yeah. he's, and that's what I think. I think it's so applies to comedians. They're very yeah. punk rock in that way that they're like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fuck up six more discs in my back because yeah. I, the joke needs it. I know. Yeah. I mean, I have, I feel like I have like a few more, I, I want to kind of maximize my, um, you know, I just watched Fosse Verdon. (gasps) How fucking insane. With with your friend. I know. (laughs) And I was totally rocked and I've become obsessed with, I mean, I've always had Fosse mania, but now I'm obsessed with Gwen Verdon. And like, and thanks to Michelle's just absolutely staggering performance. And And I'm like, and I heard her say this, when Verdon says in an interview, she's like, dancers die two deaths. 
She's like one when they're 40 and then one when they actually like kick the bucket. Yes. And I was like, yes. I was like, Oh no. I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> I've already, I mean, like, I was like, I'm about to die my first death, I didn't realize. So I'm I'm trying to maximize and, like, these next few years, really trying to ham it up and dance as much as I can. It's going to be a lot of dancing. Like, yeah. yeah. I love thinking of you looking at scripts and being like, is this disc loss worthy, this joke? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I also just, like, bless, John, bless. But you haven't been doing it in fucking platform heels. No, Do you know what I mean? Because, well, okay, again, I'm a little bit like... <laughs> Bitch, I've been doing comedy in fucking heels this whole time. I can't and still people do that. And still on fucking on Girls Five Eva, I have massive knee issues. Like I well, get like also shot busy. up with shit. When I was shooting with Busy, she came out with a bass drum. <laughs> yeah, yes. Wait, I, you were way, dancing with no a one, bass drum hey. in high heels. Oh my god, talk about no prepper like do it pulling a fucking aunt sassy. <laughs> Like, there was no preparation for that. It was a full fucking bass drum. You felt how heavy it was. Did we put oh, it yeah. on you? I don't, I don't you know. It? I probably would have been scared. Right, because you're like the disc in the back. But I did I drum core like, in middle school. <gasps> Me you too! Did? I was in... What did you do? Bass drum. You were bass drum? Oh, yeah. I was a bugle player. It could be the source of the back problems, but we'll... Oh my gosh. Wait, what? Where... <laughs> what drumming bugle core were you in? That this is so niche, but I now I need to know. Oh well, it was honestly it was a very small like we didn't have a marching band. It was just a little, truly just percussion at my school. Oh and we, my god! We didn't gosh. have a football team, so we would play at the basketball games. Oh <laughs> my gosh! Oh my god. That's that amazing. Is, thank you. That's Iconic. amazing. You, did you have color guard too? No. Oh my god! I wish if it would have been color guard, that's what I would have done. I worked my way up to color guard. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed. I want to see a picture of you with your little bass drum. I, I gotta, I gotta find one. Okay, all right, go on. Sorry to be like very distracted by drum and oh, no, no, core. Please. That's exciting it was, for me. It's so important to me, drum, drum core. <laughs> <It gave me laughs> Do my, you still drum? Um, no. But sometimes I think that would wouldn't that be so cool? Yes. <laughs> to drum. Like a drummer. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> It would be so cool. I need to do it, but it's just like the loudest thing. It's like so rude yeah. to your neighbors. I mean, I no, can you get have to get one that. of those like weird electronic sets yeah. that you wear headphones and yeah. practice or whatever. I feel like only um, really cool rich guys have those. Yeah. I mean, do you know who you're talking to right now? Because <laughs> <laughs> my friend John Early, really cool rich guy. <laughs> Like, that's how you describe yourself to people, right? Always. Always. Oh, my gosh. Oh, honey love. I was traveling all day yesterday. I was wearing my honey love bra. It's the best travel bra. It's the best travel bra, you guys. <laughs> you guys. I was traveling all day long. And I got home and I didn't immediately feel like, oh, my God, I got to take this fucking bra off. Yes. I felt like it's fine. I mean, it's fine. I could just go to sleep in this bra right now. Yeah. Fly back across the country. I could just do it. Their bras are so comfortable. I'm serious. You will forget you're wearing them. You you might even fall asleep in them. The best selling crossover bra is what I was wearing. Yes. It's so comfortable. It will be your new go to. It gives you all the support, like a traditional underwire or whatever bra gives you, but it doesn't use any underwires and it has mesh detailing, which is a little sexy. It's a little sexy. It's so cute. It is the bra you will enjoy wearing. You won't want to take it off. For a more relaxed lounge bra, there's also the V bra. It offers the support of a traditional bra without underwire as well. It lifts and separates with molded cups and is not like a, you know, uniboob. Doesn't give you a <laughs> uniboob. <laughs> and Honey Love have, has everything. If you need leggings, they have leggings. Shapewear. Their shapewear is beyond compare. You're kind of covered. Guys. Live your they life. They got it all. They have you covered. Honey, you need it. You need <laughs> Honey Love in your life. You've earned it. 
You should treat yourself to the best bras on the market, but also you could save 20% off at honeylove.com slash best 20. Use our exclusive link, guys, to get 20% off. Honeylove.com slash best 20. After you purchase, they ask you where you heard about them. Please tell them it was us. Just tell them we sent you. Please. You deserve it. You deserve this. Honey, you deserve this. I love Gina so much. My little baby Gina and my kitties. My kitties were so happy. Everybody was so happy we were home. They've had a myriad of pet sitters in and out of the house since we've been gone. (laughs) And all of them came to the door standing and applauding when when I walked in last night. Best friends, holding hands, holding paws. (laughs) Um, and I know you love the girls, even if they drive you crazy sometimes. We sure do. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, guys, this is the thing. Your pet is the love of your life, too, I'm sure. And it's your pet's one of a kind. So is their journey. And while every playful moment is a memory in the making, sometimes our cats and dogs are a little too good at getting into trouble. It's why you should check out ASPCA Pet Health Insurance. The ASPCA Pet Health Insurance Program offers customizable accident and illness plans, making it easier for pet parents like you to help your pet get the care they need. The ASPCA Pet Health Insurance Program has been around for over 18 years, and they've helped more than 600,000 pets during that time. They allow you to customize your plan, helping to ensure that your pet's plan is as unique as they are. Because honestly, vet bills can really add up, especially when you're least expecting it. It's very simple. You use their app to submit a claim and you'll receive reimbursement for eligible vet bills directly to your bank account. To explore coverage, visit ASPCAPetInsurance.com slash busy. That's ASPCAPetInsurance.com slash busy. Again, that's ASPCAPetInsurance.com slash busy. This is a paid advertisement. Insurance is underwritten by either Independence American Insurance Company or United States Fire Insurance Company and produced by PTZ Insurance Agency Limited. The ASPCA is not an insurer and is not engaged in the business of insurance. Um, John, I have a question for you. Did you always think this was going to be the eventuality for you? this this life this work yes <laughs> you strike me as that type <laughs> you you do you strike me as a per- not like there are people who are like you yeah, know i sort of but like i can see that you would have always been like on this trajectory no plan yeah. B. yeah that it was it was always kind of i was always doing little you know like I was directing like little Skip Brady Bunch sketches at my daycare, you know, like <laughs> I was like very like managerial kind of like, all right, guys, times at three, we got to like, you know, we got to get ready. Um, and I would always play Jan. <laughs> oh, me too. Yeah. I was what, always about, Jan. what about yeah. Jan spoke of to course. you? Of course. Well, she is, you know, she's the, the true, she's the misfit. She's the, um, she is a gay icon, you know. She's, yes. Um, she's the only one of the, I mean, you know, they all struggle. <laughs> but, yeah. like, she's the only one with a real any sort of, like, darkness to her. Yeah, no, it's dark for Jam. Yeah, it's dark. Yeah. And those, like, Brady Bunch movies really capture it. I mean, those... it's so genius the way they, like, made her, like, have voices in her head. And... <laughs> That's one of the most, I mean, Jennifer Elise Cox in that movie is, like... That is like a really undersung performance. I, you and I are the same person. <laughs> I think about her so frequently and also back to the comeback again. Yeah. Um, but that like one episode, she has like three lines in it in Palm Springs, the yes, Palm Springs exactly. episode. She's bad. like, oh, yeah, those chairs are all for my friends, but they're all taking naps. <laughs> and just like the amount of syllables that she puts on the word naps yeah. <laughs> is so fucking genius to me. I know. 
I, I love, love her so you, much. I love that you know that. I mean, because I, I, I'm, I'm totally obsessed with her, and it was like, and I'm totally obsessed with the comeback, obviously, and that really, that was so full circle for me. It was seeing her and in such a different role from Jan and and she just really is a kind of character actress in the way they kind of don't make them anymore like can fully transform and is like not calling attention to herself she's completely serving the the story. character you know it's the story, like yeah it's it's so amazing is there someone that you are dying to work with like that you haven't yet you've worked with so many people that are incredible i have to it, say i'm just easy. looking at your imdb and getting annoyed <laughs> <laughs> most annoying imdb in the business you know not i mean it, it, it's like it's specific probably just like for someone like me but like you know what i mean but is there is there some i mean the, amy working with amy sedaris must have been like a goddamn dream it was that was the most surreal thing that has like ever happened to me. That was so crazy. How did it happen? I mean, she just somehow knew of me. Like I I don't that I met her on set. That the first time I did it. And you know, like Strange with Candy is I cannot overstate how much that influenced me and and really kind of changed my life. Like you know, realizing there was this, like, I I, re- I was, like, watching that in high school, like, just kind of, like, I didn't know you could be this, I didn't know you could, like, make fun of this thing, you know? Right. This, like, conservative strain of our culture, you know, like, it's, like, it's just so genius, and it's so precise and beautiful, and I, I don't know, but I, but I, yeah, I totally, it was surreal to work with her, and she was so sweet, so sweet to me and so funny on like so amazing to see like a crew full of straight guys who are like dying laughing at her and she's like they're like walking by her and she's going like damn (laughs) (laughs) she's just she's like making she makes everyone it's really sweet the way they all love her that whole crew i mean Um, she's incredible the best she's an icon Um, but it doesn't surprise me that somehow you were brought together because I think of you as the same type of artist that I think uh, of Amy Sedaris as. Like, you're always doing something because clearly it's, like, your life. You know what I mean? Like, you're in movies, you're in TV shows, but you're also doing live shows. You're always, you're always making something, which is a quality that I really, really admire because to me that means that it is your life. That's really nice. I wish I had though her her desire to like make crafts, <laughs> like because I wish I also had something to do with my hands. Okay, you home. can. Why not? I know. I that's that's the new goal is like find something that can like, like that's not my phone that I can like zone out and like you know do with my hands. I really, yeah. like, but I just don't even know where to start. I'm not. We gotta help you figure it out. Woman. Yeah, you guys. We. Got, I'm not leaving till I have a craft. <laughs> You know, why do you like to do this thing where she, um, like she, it's this craft that you just buy the craft. It's not like, but you glue gems. It's almost like a paint by number, but you stick gems. It's literally called paint gems. Paint Paint gems. (laughs) One of my, yeah, it's legit. I know all the crafts. I think it's like, it's like a painting, but it's, but you stick the, the little gems. I don't know. I feel like that's, maybe that's a starting point, a jumping off point. It's a really specific, it's a, it's like, you can look it up. It's like super specific, but like it has this little thing that looks like a pen. And instead of, and like, and then on one side of the pen, you like have this sticky, it's like a little sticky bit on the end and then you grab the little paint gem and then you place it and it's like a paint by number that sounds really satisfying it is satisfying my older daughter birdie gets goes through phases of like with her add where um like she gets like super hyper fixated on doing paint gems and she can do it like (laughs) while she's doing anything else but it is like it is like people who do like really intense paint gems it's Oh, vibe. It is a vibe. <laughs> it's a community. Just like, yes, it is a community. There are like thousands of colors and like you oh, can just, it, you can really go nuts with it. Um, 
But also she does Legos too, my kid. Does like those really intense... Have you ever done a Lego? No. Oh. I mean, and not, and not even really as a child because I was gay. I mean, I thought that gay kids <laughs> don't use Legos, but I just was kind of like... I feel like some little kids think it's basic. Really? Yeah, that that's my kids were like, I I wouldn't do Legos. Like all the kids care about Legos. That's what I felt. My kids were like, no. Oh, oh. Like they they were very judgmental about I think Legos. They're diff- I think it's different now because they like do all of those like architectural ones or whatever, yes. you know? And then the flower ones, which have yeah. caused great drama in our friend group that we're not I don't not even gonna get into it, but there's been Christmas drama surrounding the the floral Legos. Oh my god, I love Christmas drama. <laughs> it's it was like is it's that like the name of your next gift movie? Swap Christmas, Christmas drama, Christmas drama surrounding floral Legos at the White Elephant. Oh God. <laughs> um, okay, speaking of my daughter Birdie, obviously she would fucking kill me if we didn't talk about antihero. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I always forget that like of course. I, it was like because it was of course like a five minute experience. How did it how did that happen? Just incoming call from T Swift. T Swift wants to know if you're a veil. I mean she's I a have fan. To, I have to be real. I got a direct text. What? <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, I know Jack Antonoff is cousins with Jacqueline Novak, you know, who I work with. Of course. So it was like all kind of through that. But, you know, did I you have to produce say, Get on Your Knees or? Yes. And yeah. well, I directed the original off Broadway show and then produced the special, which Natasha Leone beautifully, beautifully directed. Um, but. Wow, you were replaced. Okay. I was replaced. <laughs> I'm kidding. I um, also have been replaced by Natasha Leone, so I think it's fine. <laughs> no, I, honey, I was. She she killed it. She did. I, I, yes, of I course. Of to, course. Uh, anyway, um, but uh, Jack. Oh yeah, through that Taylor got my number. Taylor, I just I know her as Taylor, um, <laughs> and she. I mean, she, the truth is, she loves Search Party. Amazing. So um, that so that is something you could use with Birdie. You could be like, she's seen me in Search Party. She doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> Birdie doesn't care. Um, but uh, but yeah, but she. I don't know. She like had this. I, I, I and by the way, this is what's so funny. Like speaking of back surgery, I had literally like just had back surgery. I was horizontal when she asked me, and I was like, and she was literally telling me she was like, there's like a fight scene, and I was like. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, it, it was a. It was actually really kind of stupid for me to do that, but I was like, yeah. I have to do this. Obviously, you're and, doing and the video. I, told her, I was like, I was like, I, I have to tell you that I just had back surgery, and I was like, and I basically like can't move. And she was like, We'll work around it. We can put you in a chair, and you, you know, whatever. And I was like, Thank you. And they even got me my like. I had this like super firm Ikea mattress that I like, they got me a twin Ikea mattress for my dressing room. And I, and so that between takes, I could just go and lay back down. Oh my God. <laughs> it was so sweet, but like literally psychotic of me to do. But yeah, I had but you to, had, to, had, to, had to, to do it. You had yeah. to do it. It was once her, in a lifetime. Like, I, it was once in a lifetime. And I was like, I've always wanted to be the kind of like the Kathy Griffin and the Eminem videos. Yeah. <laughs> You know, like I love that yeah. role in culture. Yes. And it yeah. was like such an honor to be like the the clown. It did feel like the old days of MTV or something. It I mean totally. Like the sketch yes. in the middle of a video is doesn't happen anymore. No. Oh my god. Anyway, Not unless you're really literally Taylor Swift. Yeah. <laughs> but it was it the, the most embarrassing thing that happened to me is that I <laughs> she 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 was I was talking to her and she was like she was like, yeah, I kind of don't know if, like, I'm going to release this. This is when we were shooting. She was like, I don't know if I'm going to do the kind of, like, full drop of the whole album or if there's going to be, like, you know, I'm going to do singles. Because she, she was talking about how the music industry, they don't really do singles anymore. All right. You know, and, like, and I and I found myself, like, so inappropriately being like, Taylor, I was like, do singles. Like, I was like, I just, and I was, and I was like, I was like, release 
<laughs> but I was but I was specifically suggesting that that be the first single. Oh, oh and I was God, like God. realizing that I was like I was basically trying to convince Taylor Swift to like release like the video that I'm in sure. as her lead single. And I was like, shut up. Like stop. <laughs> I couldn't but I was like I just kept talking. And uh, yeah, it was so embarrassing. But she did do it. Now I'm not saying because of me. I think because <laughs> right. that song is so good. That song's fucking amazing. Yeah. And the video A, is like why wouldn't why wouldn't you suggest that? And B, were you on back pain pills? <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. So maybe that has exactly. maybe you can blame the pills, the back pain pills. Yeah, just some oxy, just some light oxy cotton <laughs> talking to Taylor Swift. <laughs> 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 oh my god, I love it. Did you go see the show? Yes, you must have. I didn't. <gasps> what? I know. It's really sad. We, but I I was because I was touring my own like stand-up show, Ooh. which was obviously really affecting her ticket sales. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, you didn't. It probably would have been awkward. Yeah, it was. It was actually quite tense. Um <laughs> but I went, that was when I was I was like shooting my special and editing my special and yeah. and, and touring that show. So it was like but I should have gone because people loved it. It was pretty cool. I mean, I went. went. Oh, yeah. I went two times. The oh, first time, my God. The first time I took Birdie, Birdie was just mad that I wasn't invited in the famous person <laughs> tent. And I was like, I didn't try to get invited into the famous person viewing tent at all. Yeah. Like, I didn't go through any of the auspices that I would have gone through if I if that was the goal. Yeah. Also, you can be normal. You can just be a normal kid at these events. You know, yeah. you don't have to have always have the thing. And she's like, I mean, <laughs> but if I have to deal with all this, maybe I could be in the famous person tent. Yeah. That's a good view. And I was like, all right, whatever. You're fine. But I got tickets like the old fashioned way, um, which was the, the, that Ticketmaster blew up, but we were oh, like right. on the list, like the verified fan list or something. And so like got an email saying, you can, here's your second shot of getting tickets. And so we got actually like pretty good tickets for the New York show, but then Someone that you knew, Casey, yes. had tickets in Philly that then she couldn't use. And so I just bought them from her. And uh, and that was like a better experience overall for me. But the seats weren't great. They were obstructed. So anyway, it doesn't matter. It was fun. It's, it, was I, incredible. It's, it was so impressive. Yeah. I mean, to me, there's like no greater like art form than like the pop tour it's wild it's so fun it's so fun i'm excited i'm gonna go see olivia rodrigo this week with my kids oh my God, here. Amazing. yeah i'm excited like, about like it an, an, the entrance of a like the first entrance of a pop star to me is like the most thrilling experience you can ever have and the only time i've ever seen beyonce too though i've been really far away which is yeah. like i i'm like <laughs> It's always, yeah, it's always the most impressive, incredible moment. Yeah. When they're like, when they're like the lights go off and everyone's like. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of so, screaming. And it's just so, it's such an uncomplicated pleasure. You're just like, there's just nothing confusing about it. You're just like, it's like being on a roller coaster. You're just like. <laughs> You're supposed to scream. Your body yeah. just knows it's yeah. supposed to yeah. scream. It's no a matter what. Event. It's a ma- What's the best <laughs> concert you've ever seen, John? It's probably Beyonce. Yeah. Never. And I, I've seen her actually a bunch of times. I also actually, I saw Robin in New York Ooh. at Webster Hall when she was doing like body talk. That that, that sounds incredible. And yeah. I was like, li- I was dancing so hard. Like my clothes were soaking wet. That's so fun. She like, and she dances the whole time and she Ugh. stopped. Like halfway through the show, she stopped and like very hilariously like ate a banana. For, like, <laughs> Look at the yeah. potassium, my yeah. hero. And we were like, and she just like was like slowly peeling the banana and eating I it, love and, like, her. screaming. It was, like, <laughs> oh my god! So fun. It was amazing. But yeah, Robin or Beyonce. Yeah, there you go. Wow. That's yeah. it. That's it. 
My husband will love to hear that because he went to see Robin by himself one time because he just had to. He <laughs> Wait, who? He just, who? My husband. <laughs> That's beautiful. He was dancing on his own. He was da- he, he was, was literally, literally dancing, dancing on him. his own. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Lola V. I just got home, washed my hair with my Lola V products. Uh, you know what it is. You know who's founded the Lola V hair care line? Our friend Jenny Annie, the one and only. Jennifer Aniston. Jenny I'm not really Annie. friends with I just think of her as my friend and that I can call her Jenny Annie. She is. She is. And I think she'd be okay with it. <laughs> and all I know is that if we want our hair to look like anyone's, it's Jenny Annie. And here we are. Spring is sprung. And it's <laughs> the perfect time to reassess your hair needs. We should listen to the woman who knows iconic hair. You know what I mean? For real. Weather's getting nicer also means there's humidity around the corner. It's good for keeping us looking youthful, but, you know, the hair can be um, an ish. It can be an ish. (laughs) That's why Lola V's lineup includes styling all-stars that not only repair the look of damage, but also shield your locks from future harm and tame frizz in the process. Even better... They're clean, plant-powered products, and they're suitable for every hair type and texture. And here's a very special treat for you. Our awesome listeners, for a limited time, you get an exclusive 15% off your entire order at lolavie.com. Just use code BEST at the checkout. I personally am obsessed with the Glossing Detangler. I have been using it for weeks now. It is a lightweight spray. It detangles, it primes, enhances the shine, it smooths, it protects, all with the power of chia seeds. Come on. (laughs) I love a chia seed. I also love the perfecting leave-in conditioner because my hair is DRY. Also, there's lightweight hair oil and I use it on my ends to boost shine and smooth my split ends and repair any look of damage. And it's vegan. It's got a vegan keratin complex with natural botanical extracts like bamboo, chia, which you know I love, and coconut. <laughs> Guys, I just love feeling like my hair is Jennifer Aniston approved. I do too. Well, you can unlock Jennifer Aniston approved hair at lolavie.com. As our loyal listeners, you're going to get an exclusive 15% off your entire order when you use code BEST at checkout. That's 15% off your order at L-O-L-A-V-I-E dot com with promo code BEST. Please note, you can only use one promo code per order and discounts can't be combined after you purchase. They're going to ask you where you heard about them and why don't you support our show and tell them that we sent you your hair. Well, thank you. And so will we. If I did think of a time I personally smelled my worst, it would be... I actually don't know. Do you know when you <laughs> smelled your worst? My body chemistry really changed post having children and it never went back to how it was before. So deodorant for a really long time has been a high priority in my life. It's necessary. I love Lumi and the whole body deodorant because I can like just put it kind of like in my cleavage or wherever, (laughs) like where I'm like when I'm working out so that I can... It just it it just like eliminates the odor completely, yeah. Because um, Lumi is powered by mandelic acid and delivers. Are you ready for it? An insane seventy two hour odor control everywhere, from your pits to your feet and even your privates. So that's mind blowing to me to have this little tube of deodorant that I can take with me anywhere and use it anywhere. Pit is under boobs, thigh folds, belly buttons, butt cracks, vulvas, feet. Come on. I got all those. We all got all those. It's baking soda free. It's paraben free. It's pH balanced for safe use. It comes in a variety of fresh, bright scents like clean tangerine, lavender sage, or toasted coconut. My favorite is the lavender sage, guys. Just FYI. That's the one I like. I've used Lumi all over my bod. It is fantastic. I love that it's it's woman invented. 
I do too. Here's the deal. Lumi Starter Pack is perfect for new customers because it comes with the solid stick deodorant, the cream tube deodorant that we were just talking about, and then two free products of your choice, like the mini body wash and deodorant wipes. I personally am a huge fan of the deodorant wipes. I keep them in my purse. And also free shipping, guys. But listen, as a special offer for you, our listeners, new customers get 15% off all Lumi products with our exclusive code. And if you combine the 15% off with the already discounted starter pack, that equates to over 40% off of their starter pack, which is amazing. Amazing. Use code BEST for 15% off your first purchase at lumideodorant.com. That's code BEST at L-U-M-E-D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T dot com. Okay, so John, on our show, we always ask um, about a pivot in life. Like sometimes people tell us about jobs they thought they were going to get and then, then didn't. I don't know. It can be kind of like anything or like a move or something like where you thought things were going to go one way, ended up going another way. So people have told us about falling in love. People have told us about life altering injuries. Um, I, I do have a kind of semi interesting one. It is industry. Well, well, I, okay. I basically, I, I didn't, (laughs) I did an all male production of Romeo and Juliet. Amazing. Wow. When I was like 24 and I played Juliet. <laughs> of and, course. <laughs> and it was like, it, I was, I mean, I was really bad. <laughs> like really, really bad. It was like this, it was the scariest thing I've ever done. You know, I went to acting school. I was very much like trying to like, be in like New York theater when I first graduated. I was always like making kind of com- comedic things on the side with friends and make, you know, short films, whatever. But like, I was very like, I'm going to do New York theater. And like, and I did this production <laughs> and I was like, and I, 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 this woman like had seen me do like a Charles Bush play where I played like uh, a girl, where I like played a chiclet kind of based on, um, I guess, the Gidget, based on the uh, the oh, right, 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 you know, um, or Sandra D. Uh, movie, but um, but yeah, so I, I like I had played it. She had seen me do this like kind of wild downtown like drag show, and she was like, "You, you should play Juliet." And I was like, "I knew it was wrong." The second she, I was like, <laughs> I, I was like, I just knew. I was like, I can feel in my body that I can't, aka like I can't like weep on stage. <laughs> Like, I don't know how to do that for like, like three hours and maybe like, ah, like I like, I was like, I literally don't know if that's like possible, but I was, but I was so honored and like that she could, s- and I was like, well, if she seemed to do this crazy kind of comedic drag thing. Then like, she must understand that maybe there's like a kind of comedic angle on this or like some sort of like punk kind of thing. Like, I, I don't know. Like, but it was literally like. I was dry as a bone. I could <laughs> not cry. And like every line in that play is like, Juliet, why are you crying so much? <laughs> like they're like every other actor or every other character is like describing the tears. They're like, it's it's like a fountain. <laughs> <laughs> is crying on camera or something that or on stage a thing that you have struggled with? Or is it That's just no. Juliet? No, no, I, I've definitely, it's because of that experience that I get really freaked out when I have to do it on camera, you know, um, and, you know, it, it, I found my way around it or like, it's like, it's, if it's in the right context, I, it's sometimes miraculously can happen, you know, right? Uh, but like, this was not the right context. And like, and I really, and I love this director so much. She was like a teacher of mine. And she's so brilliant. I just felt like I was letting her down. And I was like, I mean, it was just rehearsal after rehearsal, just complete torture. And then, and then we did like 17 shows and it was like every single one. I just like not a single 
cheer. <laughs> and, I, and then I also had this pride where I was like, well, I'm not going to like fake it. Like, I'm not going to like make sounds if there's nothing. Right. Like, right. I should have just made the sounds to like <laughs> tell the story. But I was like sitting there like on stage just being like, <laughs> just frozen, <laughs> waiting it's for a it. tear, waiting for a tear. Like I, 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 I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't do it and I was so mortified and I and it was that feeling that I know you know where like your your friends are there to see you and you come off you come out to the crowd afterward and they're like yay <laughs> and they're, they're like good job good job good job good job yeah good job. and I'm like I just played Julia and Romeo and Julia and you're going like that was great do you guys do you guys have plans this weekend? Uh, no, John, you're great. Uh, do you guys what are you guys doing this week? Is anyone doing anything fun? We could like hang out. Like just immediately changing the subject. Yeah. They're like the costumes. Oh my god, the costumes. And you know who I loved? I loved Tybalt. I loved him. And Marcuccio. So yeah. good. And the nurse! Hilarious! Oh you were good. God. You were so good. You were so good. Yeah, okay. I knew they, I was oh. like, they all, I was like, I, I'm literally looking my friends directly in the eye and it's like utterly clear that they, like that I failed. Like it really felt like a true, like public failure. It was really brutal. And, but it was because of that experience that I was like, I'm doing stand up. Genius. Like, like I ha- I was like, I have to like, I really was like desperate to do it after that because I just like, I need to go be funny in the way that I know I'm funny in a context where I have like complete control. Yes. And like, it's my words, it's my ideas. Like it's, you know, and like your humor. Yeah. And, and so that was, that was the thing that was like the kind of torture uh, experience that like pushed me more clearly into comedy. I love that. Actually. I love that. I love that. And I think it's, um, you know, it's reminding me of Joan Rivers, who I worked for for many years. She what? wanted to be a serious actress as well. And she did comedy only to support her serious acting. But she had a similar pivot where she was like, oh, this is not for me. Like, this is not who, what I'm meant to be doing. I'm meant to yeah. be doing the comedy. What did you do for her? Did you write jokes for her? Yeah, I wrote, I wrote live material for her. I never worked on... Well, that's not true. I worked on a TV pilot with her one time, but mostly wow. di- wrote stand up for her. Yeah. I remember in that amazing documentary, her with all of her like note cards, the, the pull out drawers of all the jokes. Yes. Yes. She had a card catalog. Cards. Yeah. Oh. From literally, I loved going to her house and I would always ask to go through the card catalog. Oh my God. Um, yeah. Yeah. She was the best. And I was so happy about that documentary because I think it really like, showed who she was because I think people had a misunderstanding about who she yeah. was uh, in many ways as a person. Um, but anyway, you have the same path as her. She she wanted to be a serious actress. Yeah. I feel like I knew about some plays she did in New York when she was really young. There's yeah, like some yeah. shocking like, oh, she was in that with some other like great dramatic stars. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, I love that. I love that moment. Then what was it like making the transition to stand up and doing it for the first time after? Well, I think a lot of people's in, like first kind of like foray into stand up is always like described. Like, people talk about it being so scary and so hard and like miserable and like open mic. But because of the torture I had put myself through with that show, I was like in heaven. <laughs> like it was like it was just a lot like I was it just it was so much better than what I had just been through that I was like great like I was down for the indignities of stand up because it was like nothing compared to me being in front of like 700 people be, like being completely dry <laughs> I know <mean. laughs> I'm kind of obsessed with the idea that like you just went on stage every night and just wouldn't do a because it's also just like I can't even imagine <laughs> and what did she what did the director yeah, what, what did, did the she, director like, say well she was very Addis- like she was like surprisingly kind to me about it I was like always waiting for like the hammer to come down or whatever like you know like she was she like was very I think she also knew that like maybe like 
being sweet to me would like help, you know, and like not, not like, you know, getting mad at me. So she was always like very sweet about my performance. She, she still claims to have loved my performance, but like, man, I just, you didn't love it. And that was what was important. It was life changing. No one else liked it. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, <laughs> to me, it's it's just so rude that I wasn't even trying to fake it. Like I, like, and that's part of the, like. Had I just made the sounds, maybe it would have started. <laughs> maybe, but you well, just never went down that road, right? Yeah, yeah. That is actually a thing that people yeah. like. It's kind of part of it. Like yeah. that's also that. Oh my god, you guys! I did try to watch the curse on the airplane yesterday. Yeah. yeah. The first episode and I was, it made me too uncomfortable. I had to stop. I couldn't watch it. It's so uncomfortable. Yeah, I'm scared. (laughs) But there's like the very first scene, the reality producer puts like this older woman. He like just was like, can I put a little bit of um, water in her eyes? Your son, your son just got a job. Can I put, I'm going to put, he's like, no, no, and the, (laughs) <laughs> they're sitting there and they're like, I don't know if you need to. And, and he's like pouring water in this old woman's <laughs> eyes. And then he's like, I'm just going to hit her with the menthol stick a little bit, just a little <laughs> menthol stick. And which is like, like Hollywood break for those yeah. of you who don't know the menthol stick is like a thing. It's like a little, um, I don't know. It's like got like a, you blow in both sides and in yeah. the center of it is a solid menthol thing. I don't know. Crystal. And they what? Crystal? Like a, I don't like know. Like a little crystal. Yeah, yeah it's like, like a, a little hunk of menthol. Yeah. Menthol. Wow. Which is like a crystal. And they blow into your eyes with it and it makes your eyes like red and watery sometimes. I mean, I don't know. It never really worked for me. <laughs> well, I've done the menthol stick or the the, the blower thing. And it's like, yeah. literally they did it. Oh, one time this girl was like, oh, I kind of have, I have like a homemade menthol thing. I'm like starting to make my own like products. So I was like, oh, cool. And she blew in my eye and I literally couldn't open my eyes for like two hours. Oh my God. To, like, cause it was Because it burned my eyes so bad. It was literally, I was like. Wait, John, <laughs> I was on a movie, on an indie movie called the smokers it's like a terrible terrible indie movie when i was 19 years old oh my god and um the makeup artist there was this like we were like sobbing like all the time in this movie whatever and the makeup artist was like oh i don't use a menthol stick here and she just dipped her finger in tiger balm oh Oh, no and then just put tiger balm in our eyes no yes (laughs) yes <laughs> yes it's such a funny job it's insane it's so <laughs> funny it's bizarre you're it's lucky really funny. that your back works you're lucky that you both still have your eyesight eyes. yeah, we're yeah, lucky yeah. that we have our eyes we are definitely <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you have oh. a hard time crying in real life no no yeah, no. you're a ca- aren't you a cancer? No, my mom's a cancer and Kate Berlant's a cancer. Mm, maybe it's Kate but, that I'm thinking of. Yeah, I'm an Aquarius Capricorn cusp, but I don't, only learned that recently. I always thought I was an Aquarius. Okay. I I but I did when I was like younger, you know, my parents were I mean this like involved in the ministry, you know, they were at one point like hardcore ministers and then they were kind of just like worked at Vanderbilt Divinity School and stuff. But like because of that, I was like they were often doing like funerals and, you know, and so like, and I would, so I had a very strange, and I think this is like really influenced my sense of humor, you know, like yeah. I had this very strange feeling as a kid of like, like I'm at something where I'm supposed to be crying, <laughs> right? you know, and I'm like, and I'm not there. Yes. You right. Know? And like, there's something like, like, just cause when you go to a bunch of funerals, like that were for people you don't really know, you know, like it, I don't know. There, so I did have a, I think, strained relationship to crying from early on because of that. But now I'm, as I get older, I'm just becoming so maudlin and weepy, and I'm like, it oh, happens no. like when everything, I, makes me cry. everything, yeah, everything makes me cry. I feel like I 
the weirdest things make me cry. The weirdest, <laughs> most inappropriate things make me cry. And then things that I should be crying about. I'm never able to get it up in real, in, <laughs> yeah. even in real life. I need the menthol stick. So well, yeah, it's like sometimes there is, if, if there's a kind of cultural expectation to cry, I, it's like, and that's part of what I think was going on in Romeo and Juliet was like, it, I was like rebelling. Like yeah. part of, even though I desperately wanted to, I think part of me was like, fuck you. I kind of feel like I want you to do one of Five. Juliet's monologues. Like just, you know what I mean? Like I just feel like maybe as like just a, like let's just revisit is all I'm saying. Yeah. Just let's yeah. revisit. Just on Instagram just, for all of us. Also, enjoy. let's just see, let's just see what comes up at this point. <laughs> You know, now that you've maybe had we free ourselves. Such a rich life of experiences. I don't know. I don't know, John. It could be it. I, I, was, I can do it at the bowl. At the bowl. <laughs> We're going to book the bowl. You know what? Sarah Bareilles is playing the bowl. Oh, my um, God. In August. August, I think it's like August 17th or something like that. I'll ask her if you, if you open. can open with. A, a monologue from Romeo and Juliet. Barefoot. <laughs> yes. Gallop In a face. gown. Yeah. <laughs> it'd exactly. Be, it'd be stunning. It'd be stunning. Just you on stage in the middle of summer in Los Angeles, long flowy gown, barefoot. <laughs> Perfect. I would love it. That's art. You should do it. It would be art. Ah, uh, Guys. I love you both. You're really cute. Well, I, I actually have to address something really quickly before we what? wrap this up. Please. That I called you Cassie on this pod. <sighs> That's okay. And not That's Casey. Right. That's all right. And I think, and I, you know, we've followed each other on Twitter for 62 years. And I have, <laughs> I think, always deleted the I. It's we. I have never, I have never seen the I until Busy said Casey. And I was like. <gasps> <laughs> Can I tell you something? It's. So nice it's, of you to yeah. address and to say something. I, I really appreciate it. I didn't say anything about it because it's so common. It's yeah. to, we just it's talked like, about this. People that have known me for years, but ge generally online friends are right. always saying to Busy, like, oh, I know Cassie, tell her. And Busy's, Busy always so nicely makes it a point to say my name so that someone will pick up on it because she knows I'm just like, Right. Um, I well, mean, it's like, not for me to be like, actually, it's Casey. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Although that would be a, such a flex. Really quick story, and I'm sure I've told it on the pod before. Busy, it, like, this wasn't even ever supposed to be my name. So, yes. like, when I was born, my dad, my dad was stationed in Thailand, and he was allowed to come home for my birth which was a really rough birth. My mom was very ill and went through a lot of things. She had to have an emergency C-section and my dad was just like literally running in right before they put her under and into a military hospital. And so he was like, what, in case they ask, like, what, what are we naming the baby? What do you want to name the baby? And my mom said, I want to name her Cassandra after my friend Sandra. And yeah. my dad was like, okay, got it, got it, got it. So my mom was like, she was out of it. She was down for the count. And my dad was like in hours being sent back to Thailand. <laughs> and they were the, because it's military hospital, they oh came in God. and they said, what's this baby's name? We got to fill out the birth certificate, chop, chop. And my dad was like, my wife wanted to name her, I forget. No. Yes. And so he just said the closest thing that he could remember, which is a really common last name where we come from in Massachusetts. Casey yeah. is a French last name. And he put that on the birth certificate and they just left it. Like that's the state yeah. of like, that describes everything about my parents. They just left it. <laughs> sure. And I never realized until I think I was like probably seven years old and I was going through shit in our big hoarded up attic and I found my baby book, which was half filled out as people did back then. They never filled out a full baby book, but it was filled out for a baby named Cassandra that shared my birthday. And I was like, 
immediately because I'm dramatic. I was like, oh my God, I had a twin sister that died. That was named, <laughs> I'm Casey. She was Cassandra. I found her baby book. And I was like sick to my stomach because I was yeah. so dramatic. I was like, yeah. they, they've hidden my dead twin sister from me for all these years. <laughs> and then I got my courage up to ask about it at bowling that night because my parents were on a bowling league. <laughs> and so in the middle of like their bowling, when they were sitting down together, I was like, did I have a twin sister who died? <laughs> and my mom was like, what the fuck are you talking about? And I was like, I found a baby book. It's filled out for a Cassandra, not a Casey. And my mom was just like, oh, no, th- you're accidentally named that. Well, then yeah, I got the yeah. whole story finally. That's so totally anyway. Sweet. You holding on to that. It's a really weird story and it's a really weird way to get a name. And I was never supposed to be named that in the first place. And it's given me trouble my whole life. So sorry to add to the trouble. No, I I know you don't care. I know you don't care. I feel so much better talking about it. I feel like I owe I owe you now. Now you <laughs> now you can call me and tell me a traumatic story. Okay. <laughs> it's not really it's not really that traumatic. It is kind of funny. It's one of those stories that I think is kind of funny and other people are like, "Oh, that's actually kind of sad." And I'm like, "Man, actually it's no, kind of No, no, I think it's so sweet. I I love you finding the the book. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for letting me tell it. You have to tell your story. <laughs> you have to tell your story. I tell all my students. Yeah. You gotta tell your story. John, are you going back on tour anytime soon too? Well, in September, I am going to do some live shows. No. But yes, I'm going to do a small tour in September. Lucky mm. us. Lucky us. Guys, if you have never seen John Early in person, that you know me. I have comedy damage. I do not laugh to the point of blacking out hardly right. ever but you get me there every time and i'm so grateful for it oh yes that makes me so happy if you get to see john early in person go every every single night it's possible to see a john early show thank you thank you um and you don't have to wait until september to see john early be brilliant and funny because you can watch the movie Stress now? positions. April Wait, is it- 19th, it comes out in New York. April 26th, it says everywhere. But also in LA, there's going to be actual, you can see it in theaters in LA on April 26th. Okay. And then is it going to be streaming or? Yeah, I, th- I think so. You would think I would know this. As the producer of the film. <laughs> yeah. Stress positions. In this day and age, though, it's it's complicated. It, let me tell you something. Like waiting to see how it does, and then maybe they'll put it in other smaller markets. Yeah, I hope it does. I hope it goes wide. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really funny movie. You're really funny in it. You did a great job producing it. Thank I'm excited you. for everyone to see it. So yeah. So in this day and age, when you don't know when it's coming to your city or when it's coming to your television, make an effort to figure it out. Make yes. an effort to find out and see a friend. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, all the things, John. Thanks for having me, y'all. It's what so good to see time. you. Oh my gosh. Thank you for making time for us today. I know that you're really busy and uh, the fact that you had an hour to spend with us is a really huge deal because we're we're huge fans well it's mutual and i absolutely wasn't busy (laughs) 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 i made time for you i listen i've chosen you over other podcasts but i don't i don't want the listeners to think i'm um living some sort of crazy life i'm the only other thing i'm doing today is like getting jeans (gasps) <gasps> yeah, <laughs> that's exciting. That is exciting. New jeans are exciting. I, let I, us know how the I new desperate. jeans go. I will let you know. Okay. All right. Are you going to go to the jean bar at American Rag? I'm going to denim doctor. <laughs> oh, that's you know legit. You know what that is? Yeah. Yeah, of course. My friend is taking me. My friend who like was at my house the other day and I had like a full like along the perineum, like full <laughs> split. <laughs> In my jeans. <laughs> just, and that, I, that I've been living with for months. Out of yeah. Months. I'm just yeah. like, oh, you know. It happens. Yeah. Um, no, the denim doctor, I always have them repair my jeans. And then they also have really great vintage jeans. Nice. That's what I'm getting. I'm getting a whole yeah. new vintage. Because it's like literally. All new vintage. Yeah. Well, I don't you know. Bring them, them in. Customized. Okay. It's like, kind of their 
thing. Yeah. yeah. Maybe they can. Although sometimes they put this like patch on the inside uh, and then it's like, just like feels like weird. Ends. Yeah. <laughs> it loses the appeal. Yeah. I don't know. All right. Well, have fun at the denim doctor. Thanks, we guys. adore you. I adore you guys. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Thanks for, for being coming, here. John. Bye, John. Talk to you Bye. soon. Bye. Bye. I'm glad that um, that in America we have denim health care. Mm, definitely. You do that, have to pay for it out of pocket. Hey. <laughs> you have to pay full price Thanks, out guys. of pocket. But that John Early can go to the denim doctor. Yes. Thank God. Makes me feel, makes me feel good. Um, I have to be really bad and then go pee and, and back then we'll, and we'll say, what say what we're doing, doing our best, best at. at. All right. What are you doing your best at this week, Casey? What am I doing my best at this week? Well, we're starting to ramp up for the QVC Plus show, Busy This Week, premiering May 8th. So there's yes. been a lot of work to do for that, which is great, but also yes. like I'm kind of rusty, you know, just sure because I haven't been doing it. Um, and so I've been just trying to balance that. And, and when I say rusty, I don't mean like, you know, it's just, it's interesting to like step back into your voice and your power and your authority in doing something that you haven't done in a minute. And so there's all that. And, um, and also like stepping back into like managing the stress of things being up in the air and not knowing answers and trying to answer the things you can answer and prioritize things like it's it's really interesting and then the <laughs> the most interesting thing is like even though i'm only going to new york for like 5 weeks it's there's this phenomenon that's happening where a lot of people want to hang out and spend time together before I go, which is so nice. That's like the best problems to have. Um, but it's funny because I'm only going for five weeks and there are five week stretches when I don't see anyone at all. So, But it's just so a lot of people have been wanting to hang out and there's a lot going on. And so I'm trying to do that because I'm just trying to take advantage of it while it's there. I mean, who I'm not I'm not going to question why people want to hang out, even though I just said it and it sounded like I was questioning it. I'm not, but I'm just trying to manage all of that, like all of this, you know, going out to dinner, going to lunch, going to a show, going to a party, all of those things. And also hang out with my family who will actually miss me, I think, very much for five weeks uh, because they do indeed see me every day. So they actually do see you every day. Yeah, it yeah. will it will change their days a little bit. Um not in a bad way, but I'm just I'm just trying to do all of those things in that like you know weird way that you're so familiar with uh, because you've been working all along you know just in this time when everything is kind of like remote and we're all kind of distracted and we're all kind of rusty mm -hmm. and our yeah. priorities have changed and, you know, just totally. all of that stuff. I'm just trying, I'm trying to be who I was four years ago while also being who I am today. Yeah. I was going to say, you can't do that because that will yeah. never work out, but you just yeah. got to like show I'm up trying in to, the way that you can. Yeah. I'm trying to do what I've always done, but have taken like a little bit of a break from doing, but trying to bring like who I am today to it and hopefully that's like a wiser uh you know person with better perspective um on things but it's been it's been really fun no complaints Amazing. how about you what are you doing your best at uh I don't know I guess just like I don't know I don't know <laughs> you're just getting you're, through it I mean you probably have a little jet lag yeah, I mean, I don't even know. I just, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it's been, um, yeah, it's been, um, um, it's been interesting. The last couple, um, the last couple of weeks have been really interesting. So it's just been a lot of things, all of the things, and. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. We're gonna talk about more later. Not today. Yeah. Um, but I'm just trying to like continue and be like grateful and um 
I'm so grateful and thrilled that we're going to get to do this show. I'm looking forward to it a lot. And that's about to start. And so I'm trying to kind of like get on top of like some, I guess, like literal housekeeping. Yeah. <laughs> before. You know what I mean? So yes. like that's, that's part of what I'm trying to deal with. And maybe I'm doing my best at that. Yeah. 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 That's it. Well, I'm excited to see you. I'm I excited to see you so soon that I got to see you still. and that I'm going to see you in a couple weeks. And I'm excited to see everyone uh, on the East Coast. I know. And uh, and also, you know, I'm I'm excited to spend the next couple weeks with everyone here, um, which is it's a nice thing. It's a nice thing to feel like that, you totally. know. To, fe- to feel that way. And uh, and thanks to all of you who have been so supportive and uh, excited and kind. And it's just, it's that's a really, really lucky thing. In a time when things are confusing and weird often, thanks for being supportive and not confusing and not weird. Because <laughs> always... How fucking we love lucky you guys. is that? We love you guys. Thank you so much. And we'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye. Oh, no. 